There you go. Asked to talk about gratitude, at this point in my life and in the life of the world, my first gratitude goes to the fact that I'm healthy, that I have a place to shelter in place, and that I have family with me who care about me and for whom I care tremendously. But I want to talk a little bit about gratitude toward others, toward the many different groups of people with whom I work to make social change. The particular thing about this work, about organizing for social change, is that it really cannot be done alone. So it matters tremendously who else is involved. It matters that we learn together, that we learn to work together. And for me, it means that I remember to let them know how much their work means to me. I spent almost 20 years of my life running America Jewish World Service, working to end poverty and advance human rights in the non-Jewish developing world according to Jewish values. The work that I did was not work that I did. It was work that was done by an extraordinary staff, by a program staff, by fundraisers, by evaluators and organizers and advocates. And it was exciting to work with them every single minute. So I owe them all a huge debt of gratitude. But in some ways, even more exciting was the opportunity I had to get to know the people on the ground in some 20 other countries, people fighting for every kind of social change, fighting to empower women, fighting to end child marriage, fighting for LGBTQI rights, fighting for fundamental land rights for farmers. And in each instance, to know that we were in partnership, those people those indigenous leaders worldwide often thanked us at American Jewish World Service for our support of their work. But I knew, and I hope I told them often enough, how grateful I was to them. Grateful for, to them for believing in a better future for themselves and their communities. Grateful to them for their being willing to fight for those changes against the worst possible odds. They often showed us how it should be done. I think very briefly of Lema Bowie, who organized to stop a civil war in Liberia and went on to help us find ways to control the spread of the Ebola pandemic. I think of Eliana Elias in Peru, who continues to work with women to advance their health in the most rural, most indigenous, poorest parts of her country. And I think often of the activists from Cambodia to Guatemala, people fighting for the right to their own land, for access to land on which to grow food, for access to water, often, and let me be clear about this, putting their lives on the line and sometimes losing their lives because they were willing to fight for justice. I owe them, we all owe them, tremendous gratitude. Moving on. I am privileged now to work with several different groups of people. Some are colleagues, some are students, some are active volunteers, and many are engaged in key political struggles, whether those struggles are for individual candidates or on broader issues. Fighting racism, struggling for a cleaner environment, ending mass incarceration. And as you gather, I could go on. But let me just say that I am grateful to the people in each of these movements, grateful for their willingness to keep learning and their willingness to keep teaching me, grateful for their willingness to organize in the pursuit of justice. And so let me end where I began. I am most grateful for my family, for the support they've given me in the work that I choose to do, for the support they give me as caretakers of us all, and for the support they give me in supporting the changes that I hope to make in my city, my country, and the world. Thank you.